Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Today is a special day. Today is a, the beginning of a new month. The month is called the month of ER. We've been talking recently about this concept of time. It's funny how this just happened, by the way. It really very much fits into this theme that we're going to be building towards, which is the joy of, of life. Now, to get to the joy of life, you have to be able to um, really appreciate the little things. And I want to share with you a couple things that happened yesterday. And then this. So it all works together. For those that are joining us now for the first time, for those who are hearing this now, I'm sure Andy's going to cut this before he posts it. So if you're hearing this on the demand, I want you to understand that I have some of the most patient people in the whole world with me right now that stuck, stuck with us through technical difficulties. We love you more than ever. Thank you. Yesterday, I was blessed. Um, there has been a stomach virus going around. I don't know if you guys are part of it or not. I think it's going around the entire country. Um, and yesterday I was lucky enough to have it. I woke up in the morning and I was like, mm, something's going on. And it hit like almost everyone in my family. And I was like, please, I'm not going to get this. I'm tough. Um, and somewhere around eight o'clock yesterday morning, I was like, yeah, okay. Um, and then it went from like, you know, that to, to pretty rough. Uh, and I spent the entire day yesterday in bed and much of it really, uh, at least part of it in pain. And in the middle of this experience, this bout with a virus in which you can't control, which completely takes over you, I hope nobody gets what I got yesterday. I was noticing that I couldn't concentrate on anything. People were talking. It was like it was like grating at me. I was trying to like read something. I couldn't concentrate on the words. I was trying to listen to something. I couldn't. I, there, I, I couldn't. I was in too much pain. I needed every single bit of my attention to be focused on getting through those. When the, the it came in like waves. I don't know if you guys have experienced this before. Like comes in like waves until you can find a position where you can just at least be not in pain for a few minutes. And like, I guess, viruses work, at least stomach viruses, at some point, I guess it goes away. And thank God, you know. And I kept on thinking about the show. I kept on thinking about what we're talking about. I kept on thinking about sitting in bed and really spending the entire day, mostly either in pain or sleeping trying to muster up enough energy to make sure I get the morning prayers in to make sure that I can like just get through the stuff that I need to do, which I couldn't get through most of it. And as I was sitting in bed, it was, I was, it was real. I was realizing in a real way, this concept of time, it's not enough to have the minutes on the clock. It's the ability to have the minutes on the clock that can be productive. It's the ability to make sure that the minutes that you have on the clock are minutes that can be used for a productive use of your time. Now, it's productive to try to get through an illness. It's productive to, to do everything that you need to do in your life. And there are people that are accomplishing more being health or trying to get healthy when they're sick. And even though it looks like they're not going far because all they're doing is getting back to normal, they can be using their muscles much stronger than those that are blessed with health and are wasting their time. But it dawned on me that we've been talking a lot about the concept of being responsible for your time. And responsibility really begins, believe it or not, with appreciation. You can't take responsibility for something that you don't appreciate that it is yours. Now, it's not yours, yours, it's God's. But if it was leased to you, if it was given to you on loan, when you think you have something forever, and the way the brain works is that when you're in something, you can't imagine not being in it. And when you're out of it, you can't wait to get back into it, right? Those of you who ever had a 24-hour a virus, which I hope that's what I had because that was yesterday. 
you know that like when you're in it, you're like, you can't imagine not being in the virus. But the minute you're out of it, you just can't even, you don't even remember it. And when you remember it, you remember it so much better than it was. This is the reason why parents aren't the best at giving advice to their kids, believe it or not. We think we're amazing at giving advice to our children. We're really not as good as we think. And the reason is because we don't really remember growing up. We think we remember growing up, but we really don't. I mean, if there are moments that are very traumatic, we'll remember those moments. If there are moments that are highs and lows, sure. But like a regular random day in high school, you're not going to remember. So when your kid comes to you with like a question or a problem, you don't really remember the depth of how you felt if you, when you were there. We don't really remember how hard it was. Like and people call me sometimes for advice for law school. I don't really remember how hard 1L was. There are moments that like when 1L for those who went through it or are going through it is, is an incredibly hard year. And I'm like, whatever, toughen up, you'll be fine. But I don't remember because the brain has a way of forgetting anything that is not something that it is currently perceiving. As soon as you feel free from something, you almost forget the level of pain that you're in, which is why empathy is such a critical part of one's life. Because part of empathy is the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes so that you can fully appreciate that which you don't fully appreciate. That's really one of the reasons why um, God reminds us again and again that we were slaves in Egypt because he wants us to be empathetic to those people that are that come into our world that don't feel like they have a place. We won't remember otherwise. We'll forget that we had this. That's why some of these days are so critical. That's why Yom HaShoah was so critical. That's why remembering things is such a critical piece of one's year because otherwise you'd never remember. I mean, you see somebody who don't know, who doesn't know their past. I don't, you, me and you have friends like this. They're religious. They're from this background or that background or this religion, that religion, doesn't matter. But they don't really have a part of their year where they are reliving their, their own religion. They don't really understand the depths of where their people came from because they're living in their space. They're living in their world. And in their world, there's the trees that somehow make it feel like you're always in the forest. We were always free. We always had rights, right? We always lived in a country where you can demand rights. No, the answer is no. For most of the world, you never had rights. Most of history were people that never had rights, but we would never understand that because we live in a place with rights. And some of the hardest aspects of being able to be sensitive is being able to put yourself in someone else's mind. Well, one of the greatest misconceptions that we have is that we own our time. And the way I feel right now is the way I'm always gonna feel, to quote my rabbi, Rabbi Levy. The way I am now is the way I'll always be. So if I'm okay now, I'll be okay tomorrow. And if I feel good now, I'll feel good tomorrow. And if this is my circumstance right now, this will be my circumstance tomorrow. And if I can call this person now, I can call them tomorrow. It's a tremendous misconception that gets in the way of our ability to make use of our time today. It's this idea that because I see or have something, my brain says, you'll always have it like this because you can't picture not having it like this because you're living in the trees. So your brain, unless it's trained, can't stop living where it is. It's in the sea of this moment. You can't picture being on, on land if you're in the sea. You can't picture being sick if you're healthy or healthy if you're sick. You can't picture being hungry if you're full or full if you're hungry. You just can't. The, the perception around you is so strong that we make this incredible mistake and in that the way my time is now is the way it's going to be next week, next month, next year, and for whatever. So when I'm projecting 10 years from now, I project 10 years from now in the state that I'm in right now. It's just not true. One minute, you can. I was feeling amazing on Saturday on Shabbat. And on Sunday, I couldn't move. One, each moment is least time. 
each moment that you have is time that is moving and changing and dynamic. This is such a perfect example for those who, who, are, who showed up on the show. Now, you, you catch this. We open up the show and I'm sitting in the exact same place I've been sitting for the past, I don't know, 200 times. Everything's the same. And it doesn't work. The mic didn't work for seven minutes this morning. Just because it worked yesterday doesn't mean it's going to work today. Just because something rolls one way today doesn't mean it's going to work tomorrow. Which means that when we talk, talk about responsibility for time, which is the path of what we're doing right now, we have to start to understand why we don't take responsibility for time. And one of the main reasons why we don't take responsibility for time is because we assume it's going to be the same tomorrow. We assume that my time tomorrow will be like my time right now. And so I'll just call them tomorrow. Or I'll just handle it next week. Or I'll just do the thing I want to do in the summertime. Well, how do we know what life's going to be like in the summertime? How do we know what we're going to be going through tomorrow? We don't know. Because time is least. Time is a gift. It's a gift when you wake up in the morning and you can have productive time. It's a gift when you wake up and you go through life and you don't get the usual, when you don't get unusual blocks. If you can walk around, it's a gift. If there are people in your lives that you love, it's a gift. You don't control that. We don't own that. And that's a tremendous misperception that we have that stops us. Because usually the things that we want to be doing with our time, if we are being honest, is uncomfortable. And we don't want to be uncomfortable. So the way we deal with discomfort is we say we'll do it tomorrow. And tomorrow, like I said, is a guilt-free way of saying never. And the way that we justify tomorrow is because we assume that we know exactly what tomorrow is going to look like. And even if we're right many times, it doesn't mean anything. It's still, a mis it's still a bias. We assume we know what tomorrow is. And because we assume we know what tomorrow is, it's easier to push off the uncomfortable today. But here's the secret about taking responsibility for time. Is that we have no idea what tomorrow is. And we are biased in trying to figure that out. And as soon as we recognize our own bias, that we misunderstand what's available tomorrow. If we are given the gift of productive time now, that's the greatest thing we have the ability to have time, productive time. And once we understand that and we appreciate that for what it is and for what it isn't, that level of appreciation that all I have is this moment allows us to take responsibility because I can't waste it. I have to be responsible. That is, the, that is the basis for how you do hard things, for how you, you maximize your hours. There's a little bit of an urgency that I have this incredible amount of time in front of me. I have a gift. Okay, we'll continue this a little bit more. Sorry for the shorter duration today and for the technical difficulties, but for those who stuck with me, we thank you very much. We've always loved you. We love you more. This is a big week coming up. We've got a lot going on this week, especially towards the middle of this week. We have Remembrance Day for the Israeli soldiers. We have uh, Israel's Independence Day this week. We've got a lot going on. So hopefully we'll cover it and we'll finish up this whole idea of time. Um, and hopefully we'll be, we'll be stronger together. Thanks so much for being here. With God's help, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have an incredible day. Thanks so much. We'll